Hello everyone, and welcome to another Top 5 Records video. Another one in the series, Mono vs Stereo. And today I'm going to be talking about one of my all-time favorite jazz albums, and I'm going to be answering one of my own big questions. What is the better sounding version of Something Else by Cannonball Adderley? Is it Stereo? Or is it Mono? So, to compare the two of them, what I have here, this is a 1963 mono pressing. And this mono pressing was done by Rudy van Gelder himself. These are not the original first stampers. I tell you that because there's an interesting story behind that. A couple of weeks ago, I was here in Amsterdam in a record store, and uh, one of the record salesmen there is pretty much an expert on, on, on jazz and Blue Note in particular. And I told him about a 1966 Blue Train uh, mono I found from John Coltrane. And I said, it actually has the original stampers. And he says, yeah, you might not want the original stampers because, that, because in that case, the stampers might be eight years old. And I'm not sure how the record sounds, he says, but when Rudy van Gelder does the mastering for a record himself, you're pretty much safe because then the stampers are fresh. And Rudy van Gelder, he knows what he's doing. He, 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 he will let you listen to the album the way he intended it. So that might be a very interesting thing. I'm not sure what, what the, the outcome uh, of that statement is. I'm not sure if I agree or not, but I'm taking it into account. It's a very early pressing done by Rudy van Gelder himself. So this should sound the way something else should sound. The other thing I have here is something I was lucky enough to find in Bordeaux uh, last year. A first stereo pressing from this album from 1959. 1959, but it's the first, yeah. Why is that? They released a mono version in 1958, but they jumped on the stereo releasing with Blue Note uh, a year later in 1959. And this is one of their big titles, which they wanted to release in stereo. Also, yeah, original Rudy van Gelder stampers. The man did the mixing and the mastering. So I'm having them here. A mono and a stereo. What is the better sounding version? Well, to tell you a bit of the background of this album, this is something not all Blue Note fans know or respond to because in the world of Blue Note, the mono pressings are the most collectible and a lot of collectors fully go for the mono ones. But that's a bit strange because looking at the history, and this is also why Kevin Gray and the current Blue Note uh, company uh, does their, their audio file repressings from the stereos, is that Van Gelder recorded and mixed to mono solely until March 1957. Starting March 1957 until October 30 of 1958, he did both. So from the albums he recorded in that time, in that one and a half year, there was a mono and a stereo master from the same session. So, this album is recorded March 9, 1958. So both the stereo and the mono come from unique masters from the original session. Now, looking at the differences here. The stereo one has the trumpet and the sax to the left channel and the drums and the bass to the right. The piano sounds in the middle. This is actually not a bad choice for a stereo mix, in my opinion. It kind of reminds me the way jazz can sound when you go into an underground jazz bar and when they're unplugged on stage because the volume and I mean, a lot of jazz musicians are very aware of, of volume and the way things sound. Um, as a matter of fact, I used to organize uh, film screenings here in Amsterdam in Q Factory. And we had a special guest. I did a month with jazz films and the month was ended by uh, John Engels, who was a famous Dutch jazz drummer. He played with Nina Simone. He played uh, with Chet Baker. He played with all the greats. And, um, and the first thing he said when he wanted to perform is, no, no, no. We're, we're not gonna uh, wire anything up. We are playing this room. We are aware of the volume. It was a trio with um, Benjamin Herman actually from the New Cool Collective. Uh, he's one of the few, I believe he's even the only Dutch uh, 
the, the only white European who won the Charles Mingus Award. So these guys, I mean, they, they know what they're doing. They learn from all the greats. And um, the way the saxophone and the uh, trumpet come from the left, it's, it's as if you're sitting there uh, and the position really does something with the idea of representation. Now the mono, everything mixed in one channel is obviously um, a beautiful way to go and uh, the volumes are the volumes are quite the same this is the same idea it's just a mono and a stereo version from their own masters but from the same session mixed by Rudy van Gelder so basically the differences are not that big so when I go to the next chapter about the texture, I expected that the big difference would be in uh, what I usually notice with mono, that there's a deeper, a fuller and a warmer sound. But I really did not notice that here. I expected it to sound like that, but it wasn't really the case. The only thing I noticed was slightly more detail slightly more detail on the saxophone in the mono one just a little bit more air a little bit more um extra sounds but we're, we're talking about hair lines of difference here both are just good gorgeous representations of this session of this album now if i would had to draw a conclusion a conclusion would be mostly based on taste because these are both great representations of this session. Yet, I am going to give you a conclusion. Which one will I play more often? And it'll be the stereo. To my surprise, because I'm really a mono lover, but I want, some, I want to come as close as possible to the original idea of an album. And I have had occasions in which the mono is clearly that. This is not the case with something else. I really like the stereo. I really like the wide image. I really like that idea of sitting there as if you're watching uh, a jazz band. It's lively. It's a beautiful, lively stereo one. So I understand anyone buying a mono one. If you can find a beautiful mono one, be a, you'll be a happy person and, and, and enjoy it. If you can find a good stereo one, this is a good stereo one. But also the recent classic final series remastered by Kevin Gray is a good stereo one sound great but for my personal choice i'm gonna go for the stereo i'm curious um this is my review but what do you guys think do you agree do you agree do you agree do you disagree leave a comment below and i'll see you in my next video bye